Hi everyone, my name is Rachel, and welcome to my YouTube channel. This is where I make scrapbooking process videos, and also do live scrap and chats every month. I hope you enjoy my little corner of the big crafty world, and if you'd like to watch more, please subscribe to my channel, and click on the notification bell to always know when I have a new video. If you could also give me a thumbs up, that would be super awesome. Alright everyone, let's start scrapping! Hey everyone, so today and actually over the next couple of months, I'm going to be working on a series of, not series in the sense that they're going to be related, uh, but some friends and I are working through Ellie Studios from Sketch to Finish Volume 5, or at least the first, I think it's the first 20 sketches as part of it. So I won't be sharing the sketch because it is paid content, but I will put a link to the volume I'm using uh, in case you have any interest in uh, picking it up yourself. So as I said, I cannot share the sketch with you, but obviously you're going to see my finished layout. Now in this particular sketch, there are three photos and I have three photos. I've trimmed them down. They're kind of three and a half by five-ish. Um, it's not exact. I uh, I printed them off at four by six accidentally and kind of just cut away at some extraneous parts um, because the three photos definitely are smaller than four by six in this layout. And for it to kind of work, I needed them to be that size. Now, another thing that um, there is as part of this layout is a grid design, which I'm sure it, the thought process was to be some sort of sewing or stitching. And since I don't do that, I decided what I thought I would do is take this uh, Vicki Booten rose gold glaze, thin it out with a bit of water and just paint the grid lines on my layout. So that is what we're gonna start with. I'm also working with uh, Vicki Booten's Let's Wander collection. I don't have a lot of paper, but that's okay because in this layout, actually, there's not a lot of pattern paper um, on the layout itself. So I'm going to go ahead and get you guys put on fast forward before I do. I could just, if I could just ask that you flick me a thumbs up, that would be super awesome. All right, everybody, let's get going. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. I am using Basil Marshmallow cardstock, which is a slightly thicker cardstock. It's not as thick as the Vicky Booten Foundations paper, which I love to use when I'm actually using uh, mixed media that has a lot of water in it. Um, because I'm not using a ton of water, I'm just really thinning down the glaze. Um, I didn't really think I needed the foundations paper. I'm not going to be doing a lot of mixed media, but I definitely wanted something slightly thicker than the regular thing, regular cardstock, and I didn't necessarily feel I needed to gesso the paper because I wasn't looking for it to move or anything like that. I wanted the, I wanted the paint to soak in pretty quickly. Um, so I'm just doing super messy stripes. That stripe over on the right, I knew that was going to um, be under my photos. That's why I did it there, just to test this out. Um, you know, I'm not the world's best painter by any stretch of the imagination. I wasn't looking for this to be perfect. Um, you see a couple of them go really far off course, and I'm okay with that. Um, I definitely went for the messy stripe look. Uh, so for me personally, and I don't know if this is a thing or if it's just me, um, I definitely paint straighter vertically than if I had tried to do these lines that are going to end up being horizontal. If I had tried to paint them straightish uh, horizontally, it would have gone horribly wrong. So I just turned my paper. And I know all that stuff that when I flip the paper back now, will be on the right, that's all going to be covered by my photos. So I knew those didn't have to, those, um, the ends of the lines there didn't have to go as far as my first one was. So I've got the stripes painted the way I want them. I'm just going to set that aside to um, dry. It does not take a very long time um, because I'm not using it as a texture paste. There isn't a lot of pigment there. I find this scrap of paper with the kind of model dots in different colors and I decide that's what I'm going to use for two of my photos to matte. In the sketch, uh, all three of the photos are either matted or they have some sort of border and since I didn't have a border on these, I decided to go ahead and matte them. 
um, the photo I'm going to scrap, I'm going to scrapbook, I'm going to mat last is slightly longer than the other two photos. And that's simply because otherwise I would have had to cut off parts of my head or parts of my nephew's head. And I just didn't want to do that. So I just left it a little bit longer. I flipped that paper over and I'm matting it on these um, multicolored stars. This page um, was actually a rainbow of stars and it went from cool colors to warm colors and this part of it happened to be warm colors which worked because a lot of what was going on in here was the warmer colors like oranges and pinks and yellows and that uh, not that I didn't bring bring in a little aqua but for the most part that's those are the colors in the layout so I'm just clearing out the rest of the pattern paper I'm actually not going to be using any more pattern paper except for one piece uh, of a cut apart and uh, you know it just happened to be this sketch was very like that. So I'm using that outer dark gray as my uh, 12 by 12 so I can continue working while my background is drying and I, I'm trying to line up that top photo. You can't probably, I don't know if you can see on the screen, but there's uh, an employee um, walking towards the window. So I just wanted to cover him up because it was a little awkward and he's wearing a hoodie and it was a little creepy to be honest. Not that he was creepy, but in the photo it looked slightly creepy. So as you can see, my background is already dry. So I go ahead and place my photos against them against it. Wow. So this is the cut apart that says the good life and I honestly think, you know, going and getting ice cream is part of a good life. Uh, obviously not if you're allergic to ice cream, but what else? Uh, but it was too big. So I just trimmed out that or orange Polaroid frame and I'm perfectly happy with the way it is now. Uh, in the sketch there, one of, in one of the squares, there was a grouping of stars. So I went ahead and used the wood veneer stars. It actually came with this collection as part of the embellishment pack. I then added that little chipboard rectangle that says in my backyard. It's not actually in my backyard, but it's close enough. <laughs> it's it's only like a 10 minute drive, so that's not too bad. I add that little phrase sticker, and then of course there's an ice cream sticker, so I'm adding an ice cream sticker. Um, I add another of uh, the phrase, well it's a word, if that says good, and then I added that little heart. So this is really like, in the sketch, it's very grid-like. I'm making it a very messy grid, but I'm keeping it, you know, in the grid family. So, sorry, Ms. Xanthi has decided to join us and I had to move things so she could be happy and she's not happy enough to bed, so she's climbing into my lap. Awesome. All right, so I add that file tab. I'm also adding a bunch of these chipboard stars. It's actually a black circle with a gold star on it. I add that little arrow. I add another star. Obviously, there's a little theme with stars going on. Um, so I have that going on for me. And now, so I go over to, I have a drawer of thickers in uh, a storage furniture I have. And so I, I start to go over there and then I remember like, you know, I really would prefer a smaller title and because um, I've got a lot going on already and I didn't necessarily want the weightiness that a thicker because of its depth would have. So instead I go to my October afternoon daily flash alphas. Um, I decide on this orange one for part of my title because my title is going to be Summer Yum. And um, so I go for the, the orange one for the word yum. And originally I had pulled out some orange tile stickers, but when I decided to go orange with yum, I wanted to pull in another color. So I go for this lime green and that I'm going to spell out the word summer. Um, when I finally do my room tour, which hopefully will be over the winter sometime, I will share with you what I've done to try to make sure I use my flat stickers, my flat alphas more than I tend to use them because my normal, my normal I thing is to go directly for my thickers. Um, but as I own a lot of flat stickers, I want to remember to use those as well. So I'll share with you what I did for that. Now I want to use a label sticker. So I go into my freckled fawn label sticker pack. I bought a lot of these uh, in the sale last year. So I have a ton of them. I then pull in that little aqua arrow just to bring another color of that dark aqua, which is in the, the lower corner of that the good life cut apart. 
Um, so I thought bringing in a third of that same color would work really well. I'm using a navy blue micron marker pen that I found when I was unpacking, which I don't remember buying, but you know, whatevs. <laughs> All right, the final thing I'm going to do is use some of this Tim Holtz Mica uh, spray stain. Uh, it is very pigmented and very glittery. So if you were not able to get uh, Heidi Swap Gold Color Shine, um, this is comparable to that. I mean, it's not the exact same, but it's pretty similar. All right, folks, that's going to finish off my layout for today. Thank you so much for joining me. If you could flick me a thumbs up, that would be super awesome. Bye!